and welcome to the third video of our Open Computers tutorial series. My name is Lord Yoda and I'm here with Sangar and Daka Total. Sangar is the lead developer of Open Computers and Daka Total is our cameraman. In this video, we want to take a look in how to write programs and yeah, how to run them. And yeah, yep. Sangar, your turn. Oh, I'm up. Yeah, so this time we'll have a look at basically how to create a program that can run on a computer. So we now have a running computer from the last episode and we have our disk in it. So if we run the program from last time again, we will see that it's still mounted as a read-write root directory. And so what we could do for the first thing, so these numbers don't fly around all the time, is uh, you can change the labels of your disks. So if we want to rename this disk to, I don't know, something else, um, there's the label program. So if we just run it, we will see the usage for it. And the A parameter is basically just that we specify the address of the disk. So it's enough to just type the first few characters from the address and then we take, I don't know, tutorial as the label. And then we can have a have a look and we see now it's named label. And it's not named label, it's named tutorial anyway. Um, if we look at the disk itself, we will also see that the, uh, theoretically, we should see that, yes, the label of the disk changed to tutorial. Okay, so that just as a quick tip to label your drives to make it a bit, a bit easier to work with them. Okay, so to write a program, basically what you do is you create a new file and you write some Lua code in it and that's it. So for this little tutorial, we were thinking of just creating a small program which um, takes touch input on the screen and prints out a character at the position of the screen to verify that this position was clicked. Um, basically, the idea is to demonstrate that, yes, screens tier 2 and plus, so tier 1 not, but tier 2 and tier 3 screens, they accept mouse input. Um, you can see this, for example, if I open some file in the editor, um, I can click and I can drag and so I can set the cursor just by clicking the GUI. Um, what also works, which seems to be less known, is that the screens themselves also act as touch screens. So if I shift right click, it acts as a touch screen. And if I remove the keyboard, it will always act as a touch screen. So because now it basically has no need for a GUI, so it won't even open it. Okay, so, but if there's a keyboard, it would normally open the GUI, but if you shift right click, it's still a touch screen. Okay, so how we do, how do we go about that? So we create a new file. So to create a new file, we run the edit program, which is the built-in editor basically, and provide the name of the file that we want to create. So let's name this to 3.lua. And then we see, okay, it's a new file, it's named the way we named it, and it's empty. So for a first quick example, which is like the standard example of all things, we can just create a program that prints out a message. So we enter the code, which is Lua code, we save it, we exit the editor, and we see, okay, there's a little program. And to run it, we just enter the name of the program and it will print out a message. So that's simple enough. Um, what we now want to do is, as mentioned, we want to grab some signals. So signals or events are things generated by the computer or so components uh, connected to it. So for example, the screen, when we click on the screen, it generates uh, a touch event, which can then be processed and analyzed to see did the user click anywhere? Um, to do this, we need to uh, include some libraries. So one thing to note is that in open computers, the only libraries, so Lua libraries that are available per default are the standard Lua libraries. So Lua has some standard libraries, which you can find on Lua's homepage, the Lua manual, where they're documented. So this is, for example, um, stuff like the uh, the math lib, so math.round, math.ceiling, math stuff like that, um, the OS lib, the IO lib, coroutines, um, tables, string manipulation, stuff like that. 
for everything else, which basically is stuff provided by open computers, you need to manually um, require these libraries. So how do you do that? You basically just say, okay, I want a local variable, which is named arbitrarily. You can call that whatever you want. In our case, we'll just name it the way the library is called, and then you use the require command and give it the name of the library you want to include as a string. So this will tell Lua to look for a library called event and load that and give it to us and save it in this variable named event. Uh, would so, you mind take a look at uh, available libraries? Yes, I will do that in a moment. So to, to verify that this even worked, we can just do a print of the event. And if we were now run the program, we'll see, okay, that's a table. So the built-in uh, libraries are in the lib folder. So to see the list of all available ones, you can just list the contents of the lib folder. And you see a list of file names, and these are eventually uh, basically the library names. So what we just uh, required was this file, the event.lua file. For what these uh, libraries do, the best thing you can do is just have a look at the wiki. So all the most of the libraries are documented there. A few which are mostly used for internal stuff are not explicitly documented, like the buffer uh, library, but most of them are. Um, and what libraries are is basically just Lua code with some um, predefined functions in them. So let's take a simple one, which is simple. Uh, I think this one, uh, let, let's take the colors one because it's really simple. Um, wait, no. See, so this is what I try to do now is I try to open the colors file in the root folder, which obviously doesn't exist, so I have to specify the exact path. There we go. So what we see here is basically it defines a table which is named colors and just some forward backward mapping and then it returns this table. So what is returned at the end of this file is what we get from the require call. So basically, if you want to write your own library, you just follow this pattern. You create a table, you fill it with stuff, and then you return the table. And whenever you require your library, then you get whatever table you defined. Okay, so back to our program. Uh, da -da. So now we have this event a library, and we could use this now to pull events. So there's one very important command, which is event to pull. And this command is used to wait for an event to, appear, uh, to happen, and then it returns the information on that event. What information exactly that is depends on the type of event. Again, look at the wiki for a documentation of which built-in events there are. Um, for our case, we want the touch event, which is the event that happens when someone clicks on the screen. So because we don't want the program to end after one click, we'll just pack this into a loop. Uh, not a while to what should we do? Two, oh my god. Um, okay, and now we want to get some information on what was done. So the first parameter is the event name, which will always be touched. We don't care for that. The second one will be the address of the device that generated the event. We also are not interested in that. The next one should be the X coordinate, I think. The next one should be the Y coordinate, I think. And the next one would be the button. We don't care for that. And the last one would be the name of the player. We all should also don't care for that. And we want the event called touch. So we use this. Okay, and this should now give us theoretically coordinates. So let's see if we try to just print the coordinates after each click. And now if I click somewhere, there we go. So this is the X and Y coordinates and characters on the screen. So if I click on the top left here, it should be 1, 1. There we go. Okay. So that works. So now we'll see, well, okay, so how can I stop this program? This is kind of a problem. The hardest way to do this is just to say, okay, fuck you, I s kill the computer, I turn it off and I turn it on again, and that will work fine. Um, another way is to use a specific, a specific key combo, which is Control-Alt-C. This will interrupt any pulls, any event pulls. It will basically th throw an error, and that will kill your program. So you can interrupt um, sleeps like that, sleep and event pulls. Okay, 
Um, so now we have our coordinates. Let's say we want to do something with those. So to give some feedback, we could now say, let's print some character at this location on the screen. Um, let's say we don't really know how we want to do that. Um, one way to figure out what con components can do, so components is one nice little program which tells us which components are even available, um, just as a side mark. So we want to use the GPU component now, which is used to change whatever is displayed on screens. And to get some idea of what we can do with it, uh, we can use the Lua interpreter and component singular. So these, this equal sign here in the front tells the interpreter to print the re result of whatever command we entered. So it will now print this stuff, which is a quick glance at the functionality of the GPU, but not everything. So we see here's ellips ellipsis, so it cuts off after a few entries. If we want to know more about the functions that are available, we can either loop over this variable, so we can say uh, for, so let's, let's name it name, this is the key, in the pairs, pairs is a Lua command, which basically just creates an iterator over a table. We can do this, and then we print the name. And then we see these are the fields and functions that are available on the GPU. So what we're interested in is in the is the set command. This will change some portion of the screen to display something else. To get more information on that, we can simply again use this pattern and note that I do not call this the set method. I leave away the parenthesis. So I just get the value of it, and this will uh, sadly not tell me what it should, does. It should. I will change that. Um, regardless. For other for other stuff, normally this will give you some some little documentation snippets of what it does. So I think let's say for screens, it should work. Yes. So this is what you should use, usually expect to see. It will give you a little documentation string on what this method does. Um, I seem to have forgotten these for the GPU. I will change that. Good. So GPU set. Um, assuming we know what it does which I do, of course, um, we can use this and do something with these coordinates. So let's say we go ahead and say GPU component uh, set at this coordinate, I don't know, let's print an X. This is nice. This looks good. This should work, right? Well, no, it won't. Why will it not work? It will not work because it tells me, wait, what? There's a component to global, yes. So component is another one of these libraries that are not standard layer, so we have to require this. This is something you will see a lot when you start, I think, but you get used to it pretty quickly. So basically just slap in this require at the top, component, and you're good. Okay, so now we should see X is popping up. And that's that. And it also works in touchscreen mode, of course. And that's a first little program that uses most of the functionality you will ever encounter. So everything else is just variants of the same basic patterns. So for signals, there's different kinds of signals for all kinds of things. So for example, for the keyboard, for key presses, for network messages, for, I don't know, everything, everything and anything. Okay. So much for that. Yeah. Anything important about? Okay, so basically, well, it's not really related to writing the programs themselves, but it might be good to mention it early on. Um, in the beginning of the video, I typed in what was it? Edit colors. That Lua. It didn't work. Uh, it was empty. So keep in mind that there's a working directory. So per default, you're in the root directory, which you see at this small little slash here at the left, this is your working directory. So every um, file name you pass to programs is usually relative unless you explicitly, explicitly um, write down the whole path as I did earlier with the uh, slash lib colors. So this is an absolute path, so this will work always. But let's say um, I don't want to do this. Now you can change your directories with uh, CD usually, so I'd go into the 
lib folder and now you see the working directory is the lib folder. Now I can indeed just write Carlos.lua and that will also work. So just a little uh, starter on navigating your file systems. Okay, yeah. I think that's it. Yeah, so uh, I hope we could give you a short introduction about how to write programs and how to use them. Uh, as always, keep in mind that uh, we are running this on version 1.3, so there might be some changes. And the best way to uh, yeah uh, debug your problems is to look in the change log. So if there is something about uh, yeah Lua programs, then this might be the uh, reason why your programs don't run uh, as smooth as this <laughs> tutorial <laughs> program. Uh, but basically, I don't think this will change also so much. Um, basically, more stuff will be added, but I don't think the general logic will change. Yeah, usually not. So if anything, it will change across, let's say, major versions. So in 1.4, maybe something might behave differently, but I don't think so. So it should be pretty stable there. Good. Yeah, so that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and until next time. See you.